Hi folks, this is Steve Vai here, and I'm here at the Mothership Studios in Hollywood. And uh, I have a record out called Real Illusions, and there is a track off that record called Freak Show Excess that I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Um, Freak Show Excess, because um, it's kind of over the top. Uh, but this song basically is a reflection of my enjoyment of Bulgarian wedding music. That's right. Because if you listen to Bulgarian wedding music, you'll find that these guys are completely out of their mind, the guys that play. And uh, the <clears throat> one band that I'm referring to is a, a band called Ivo Papasov and his Bulgarian wedding band. And uh, their, their, their whole frame of mind when it comes to things like creating melodies and playing on their instruments and using time signatures and phrasing is completely alien. I mean, they're very comfortable in, in very odd time signatures, although they don't feel it as such. And they're very comfortable playing in different modes that uh, basically have no reflection to Western music at all. Uh, and their phrasing and the way that they hit their notes is very different. So in order to find inspiration to apply to the guitar, I studied some of this music and came up with some cool techniques. And I'm going to play a little bit of the song. It's like a seven-minute fiasco. And uh, just show you... Uh, some of the things that I came up with for the track that I thought were uh, interesting and a little unique to uh, the style of music that I do. Okay, so I've got my Pro Tools session open here with uh, about four million tracks on this song. And the song starts out with a, a cool kind of a percussion. Uh, it's weird. I start with this percussion intro thing. But the thing that I would do, and one of the reasons it takes me so long to finish a record, is I'll take something like what you just heard and I'll make a, a loop out of it. Okay, so I created this little loop over the intro. And that goes on forever. And what I'll do is kind of sit for a while and just fool around with, uh, with that intro. discover some things but um, finally the song comes in okay now what you're hearing there is you know the accompaniment but the but the guitar I'm gonna solo the guitar so you can kind of hear the phrasing because what I was doing in this melody is focusing very intently on the phrasing of the way that the melody is played <laughs> So I started playing around over the vamp and started to come up with this melody. Now the interesting thing about this melody is the way it's phrased. It's really easy to sit here and go up and down the scales forever and shred and go crazy. But to actually make something speak with articulation is a very different thing. It took a lot of time to actually get this to fit in my fingers to get every slide and everything to sound like a different phrasing. And uh, I'll do it slow. There's no other way to create that, that sound than to go. And then when you combine it with... And then, and then the next part, the fingering is very important in order to make it flow a certain way. You know, in order to get all those little... And you got to work on those phrasing. It's very unguitaristic and takes a little work. But after a while, you'll come up with a nice, you know, phrasing melody that sounds like... So that's how I came up with that melody. Moving right along. 
Okay, this, this next section, which is the uh, B section, goes like this. Okay, the, the melody guitar sounds like this. Okay, what, what I did there was the same concept. Trying to come up with phrasing that was just a little different than the norm. And what I came up with after listening to the vamp and playing over it was this. What that is is, you know, the first riff is. It seems pretty harmless, but it's a cool riff. And, and the way that I got it to, to, to work under my fingers was to just make an exercise out of it. I mean, I would just go. Make it more melodic, but um, I was trying to get the note to kind of hang. And then that little trill in there. And then you, you can hear the phrasing starting to take place. And then the next part, that's a very it's a tongue twister for your fingers. Although it, it, it may sound weird, it fits very nicely. So the whole thing is... Something like that. Okay, then for like the second B section, I doubled it up an octave, just to add a little texture layer. conventional, this C section here is more conventional type runs, but it's the orchestration of it that makes it interesting when it comes back around in its old harmonies. Uh, I have this clean guitar coming in, and this is a very characteristic of uh, Bulgarian music. It's in 1716. And the way that I broke this up is, uh, and this is a good way to practice odd meters. When, when you're playing an odd meter, you don't necessarily, or at least the way I approach it, is you don't necessarily want it to sound so much like an odd meter. Uh, but I like it when it flows. So um, the way to do that is to make the rhythm feel second nature to you and completely natural. So the, this riff goes like this. And the way that it's subdivided, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven, bar seven. phrased with the picking makes it roll nicely off your fingers when you get it. It's a hammers, it's a series of hammers and pull-offs. So when you get a groove happening on it, you know, it starts to feel like a piece of music as opposed to just a series of hammers and pull-offs that uh, have odd time signature to them. And you do it for a long period of time and you get a groove on it. Now, soloing over an odd time signature takes a whole different feel also. I mean, you can solo in 4-4, uh, or what's natural. But uh, what I would normally do is set up a vamp over something like this and just work on it, uh, practice just solo, 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 and, and try to come up with things that sound natural without necessarily thinking that I'm in seventh. And uh, come up with things where the, the phraseology of them sounds very natural and not regimented into a particular time signature. So here's some ideas. <laughs>
Okay, so I'll sit for a while until I come up with some interesting things or an idea, and then I'll work on it. And the solo in this song, if you listen to it, it doesn't sound anything like what I was just doing because I really made a conscious effort to try to uh, incorporate that Bulgarian melodic idea into the way I phrase the guitar solo. So if you listen to the actual solo that's on the record, you'll hear a lot of those little idiosyncrasies, you know, those grace notes, which is very cu uh, customary in, in the Bulgarian melody music where they'll go like... Stuff like that, but you got to work on that and start out slow. And then they'll do a lot of things with... Uh, melodies with all these um, these quick glissandos. When you start combining these things, you get you know, some cool kind of things, you know. Um, but if you listen to this solo, it's all chock full of that. I'm sitting and working on that and figuring it out for you. <laughs> there it is. So this song, if you listen to the other uh, out of control weird sections you'll hear the same kind of thing going on the point I'm making here is it's okay to to immediately go to the thing you're always comfortable with but if you look outside of the box and try to find some things that inspire you to, to do uh, maybe a little different things on the instrument or not so normal or whatever you can incorporate them into your playing and eventually it'll feel very normal but it'll be unique to what you do. So you've got to kind of listen for those things and have the time and the patience to, to work them out. Your lesson for the day.